Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about galactose metabolism. So to begin, what is galactose? Well, galactose is a hexose carbohydrate or sugar, and it is a monosaccharide. So here are two representations of alpha-D-galactose and beta-D-galactose. So where does galactose come from? What are the, some of the dietary sources? Well, some of the dietary sources of galactose include human and bovine milk in, in the form of lactose. So lactose is simply a disaccharide consisting of galactose and glucose. Now we don't think about getting galactose in other dietary sources, but we can actually get free galactose in fruits and vegetables. And some of these include tomatoes, bananas, apples, and Brussels sprouts. And once we've ingested galactose, galactose is actually metabolized by a specific pathway known as the Loire pathway. So before we get into galactose metabolism, what happens when we ingest galactose? How does it get absorbed? So if galactose is ingested in the form of lactose, it is digested by the enzyme lactase to form glucose and galactose, or galactose can be ingested as free galactose. Nevertheless, once galactose is in the intestinal lumen, galactose is actually transported into an intestinal endothelial cell through a sodium-dependent glucose transporter, or SGLT1, and this is the same transporter that actually glucose uses to get into a intestinal endothelial cell as well. So once galactose or glucose has been transported into an intestinal endothelial cell, they're actually transported out of the intestinal endothelial cell through GLUT2 into the bloodstream. So to compare fructose absorption, we've actually talked about fructose absorption in another lesson, but fructose is actually transported from the intestinal lumen through GLUT5 into an intestinal endothelial cell, and then that fructose is then transported out GLUT2 into the bloodstream as well. Now once we have a galactose, if it is in the form of a beta D-galactose, it actually has to be rearranged, and it's actually rearranged by the enzyme galactose mutarotase, and what it does is it actually flips the configuration of carbon-1 to an alpha configuration, so it becomes alpha-D-galactose. Now once we have alpha-D-galactose, the alpha-D-galactose can then be processed by the enzyme galactokinase to form galactose-1-phosphate. The phosphate group is added to carbon-1, and that phosphate group actually comes from an ATP, which actually converts the ATP to an ADP. So once we have a phosphorylated galactose, the galactose is sequestered to that cell. Then galactose 1 can be processed by the enzyme galactose 1P uridyl transferase. And this enzyme, like its namesake, it actually utilizes a UDP glucose. That UDP glucose is then converted to a UDP galactose. And this actually processes the UDP glucose into a glucose 1-phosphate. So the UDP actually shuffles the galactose and the glucose, and this leads to a formation of glucose 1-phosphate. The UDP galactose can then be utilized for proteoglycan synthesis or lactose synthesis in the mammary gland. However, if the UDP galactose is not used for proteoglycan or lactose synthesis, the UDP galactose can actually be recycled into UDP glucose via the enzyme UDP galactose epimerase. And if there is more galactose for the cell to metabolize, this UDP glucose can then be utilized to metabolize further galactose, or if there's no more galactose to be metabolized, that UDP glucose can then be used for glycogen synthesis. So once we have glucose 1-phosphate from galactose metabolism, the glucose 1-phosphate can be acted on by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase to form glucose 6-phosphate. So once we have glucose 6-phosphate, we can utilize this in the same way we do any glucose 6-phosphate, and that can be used in glycolysis to form pyruvate. And just briefly, glucose itself is converted into glucose 6-phosphate in one single step by the enzyme hexokinase utilizing ATP. So galactose metabolism requires several prior steps to get to the same product of glucose 6-phosphate, which can then be used for glycolysis to form pyruvate. So the first few steps in the pathway, galactose 
mutarotase, galactokinase, galactose 1P uridyl transferase, and the UDP galactose pepimerase steps of the pathway all constitute the Lillooar pathway. And if there are any dysfunction or deficiency of any of these enzymes, it can actually lead to a medical condition known as galactosemia. So the medical condition galactosemia can occur if there are any dysfunction or deficiency in any of those enzymes I just previously mentioned. And this is typically a congenital problem and it occurs in about 1 in 60,000 live births. And galactosemia, as its name suggests, leads to high blood levels of galactose simply because the individual is not able to properly metabolize galactose. Now, galactosemia is due to a deficiency in one of three enzymes. So the first enzyme is galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase, or GALT, and this is the enzyme that is required for the conversion of galactose 1-phosphate to glucose 1-phosphate. Now, if there's a deficiency in this enzyme, it leads to the most common and the most severe galactosemia. And a complete deficiency of this enzyme actually leads to what is known as classic galactosemia. Now the second enzyme is galactokinase. So if there's a deficiency in galactokinase, we can also get galactosemia. But it seems like this is only associated with development or higher risk of development of cataracts. And lastly, a deficiency in UDP galactose epimerase can cause a type of galactosemia. But this seems to only affect red blood cells. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on galactose absorption metabolism and galactosemia. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.